This is Deborah Martinez Martinez. I'm interviewing George Otterby on February 24th, 4th. 2016. This interview is taking place at the University of Southern Colorado offices of <clears throat> the University Archives and Special Collections in the Library in Pueblo, Colorado. The interview is sponsored by the CSU Pueblo University Archives and Special Collections and is part of the Southern Colorado Ethnic Heritage and Diversity Archives Project. I want to confirm that you, George Otterby, understand that this interview is being recorded and this recording will be preserved in the archives. Yes, I understand. Thank you for agreeing to the interview and being part of the archives. George, I'm interested in when you came to the university, because mm -hmm. it wasn't university at the time, if you could tell us how you came to the university and um, your involvement with the <coughs> and whatever Chicano clubs were sure. on the campus okay. at the time. Yeah. Well, uh, I came to the university in, uh, what was it, um, it would have been September of 69. I got discharged out of the Marine Corps in May of 69. And that summer I spent uh, working at Gibson's and ran into uh, some friends over there. I, mean, I made friends with some of the people out there. They said, well, if you're, if you're going to start at the university, uh, or at the college at the time, it was SCSC, they said uh, you should get into sociology, okay? Because I didn't know what to get into. I just come back from combat. I was trying to focus, and I had no idea what sociology was. Uh, so Mike Garcia he worked with me at Gibson. He says, plus he says uh, you've got to get involved with this organization called Chicanos for Action. And at that time, I had no idea Chicanos for Action. What, what, I, I, my dad used to use the term Chicano, but I'd never heard it in a term to where it was an organization. It was just mostly a little, there's, there goes a Chicano over there, but it was never as a group movement. So I got involved with Chicanos for Action. Uh, Danny Armand, uh, not Danny Armanderas, Danny Apadaca was the um, chairman. And Gil Martinez, uh, I, I know he was very involved with them also because Gil Martinez was running with Sherman Trotter for president and vice president of student government. And they needed the working relationship with uh, Chicanos for Action to help them get the vote. I met Gil at the Chicanos for Action meeting. Gil then... Was he a vet also? Oh yeah, Gil, Gil was a United States Marine Corps. He was, I think, the ninth Marines he was with. And Gilbert and I developed a real close relationship because of our history in the Marine Corps, but um, he ended up being my mentor because uh, Gil ended up he didn't win the position for student government. Uh, they lost the, uh, the election. But student government said, look, we're looking for people to be in our, um, our um, commissioners for student government. And they said, we have a position to commissioner of academic affairs, I'll recommend somebody. And Gail and Sherman recommended me because of my working relationship with them. I helped them on their uh, campaign. And uh, I ended up, as Commissioner of Academic Affairs in my freshman year. <laughs> I had no idea what student government was other than what I had done in high school. I had, I had, I had uh, the uh, knowledge of how student government worked because I had been a student government representative in high school. So I got involved with student government as Commissioner of Academic Affairs. First question they asked me is, what are you going to do with, as Commissioner of Academic Affairs? I had been fortunate enough to have been going to the Crusade for Justice up in Denver, attending some of their functions, and got to meet a lot of Chicanos from um, University of Northern Colorado, CU Boulder, and Fort Collins, um, C CSU Fort Collins. They were having what they called concilios, where they would get together students and show them, this is how you get Chicano studies on campus. Uh, our focus was Chicano studies. Uh, it was telling our story. Uh, that was the whole focus of Mecha, was making sure that our story was being told. Not only um, our history, but academically. We get academic credit for, for our activity. As the chairman of, uh, or as the um, commissioner of academic affairs, I wrote a proposal to student government, and we got funded 
to go to California to study their Chicano Studies programs. While we were there, we went to the University of San Diego, Riverside, UCLA, and Berkeley. I stayed with them, went to their classes. And uh, Outward Bound has a whole training program, uh, the Outward Bound School, called Experiential Training. You talk about it, and then you do it. I'd never seen that happen until I went to Chicano Studies class. Because what happened is the instructor said, OK, we're going to study music, Mexican music. But tonight, I'm going to expect you all in Tijuana, because we're going to listen to mariachis, and you're going to get cra class credit for being a part of that project. <laughs> this, is, this is my kind of reality. It's not only the uh, educational side, <coughs> but it was a hands-on practical application. <coughs> While we were there, we also seen how Chicanese, Chicano studies was formed in the arts and history and how it applied across the curriculum. And then the biggest thing we found out was they had a concept called the Barrio Station. And the Barrio Station was the university students going back out into the community, sitting down with the community <coughs> residents, developing uh, recruitment programs for the university so we'd have a feeder system, a tutorial program. Uh, going out there and helping the kids with other programs. This played in later on very heavily because we've seen how you give back to the community. Yes? So George, who went with you on the trip to California? Oh, it had been Dr. Cordova. Uh, he was our, he was our, um, our mentor. Faculty, faculty sponsor. sponsor. Yeah, we had to have faculty sponsor. Uh, Pablo Gonzalez, who was president of Mecha at that time, and then Lorenzo Montoya, who was the vice president of Mecha and then myself, because I, I wrote the proposal, got it funded. So we were there for a week. We came back with all the curriculum, books. I mean, we, that, we had a lowrider station wagon coming back. We had so much material. What ended up happening was that we uh, came to the university. We approached the curriculum committee here on campus to implement Chicano studies. They wouldn't do it. Well, what ended up happening, I met you, because what happened is that Chicanos for Action had a big change in leadership. Pablo Gonzalez took over uh, Mecha uh, presidents. Lorenzo became vice president. And then what happened was that uh, Lorenzo, uh, it was Pablo, then J.J. Rogosa, and then Lorenzo Montoya, and then myself. When I got president to Mecha, I pulled together everybody and we had a demonstration. And that was some of the photos I was showing you earlier. We held a demonstration here on campus. We took over the campus and uh, Met with the president, and he acquiesced. We uh, got Chicano Studies on campus. Started the next fall with uh, Chicano Studies 101, and we ended up with uh, 100 students in the class. But that was because we had also written a proposal to student government for a disadvantaged scholarship program. Because the racism that was in financial aid office was so bad, many of our people couldn't get financial aid. One of our other demands besides Chicano Studies was firing the financial aid officer. And they did it. They fired him. And we got a Chicano financial aid director after that. So the demonstration proved very well, except for the whole Coors incident where a bunch of people got arrested. But that was out of our hands. We didn't, that was not part of what Mecha was about. Ours was academic oriented, not dealing with uh, Coors. So what ends up happening is that uh, we have the demonstration. We get Chicano studies on campus. and. Uh, it was ours. How big was the demonstration? Well, we had at least 100, 200 people. Where? At the administration building. Yeah, we surrounded it, took it over. But we did not deny access. Uh, if you deny access, you're in violation of their rights to uh, public facilities. What happened down at the Coors pub, that's where they had the other demonstration, was they blocked the entrance, and they were arrested when they blocked the entrance. So and we had nothing to do with that. I mean, we. That was none of ours. That's, that was Brown Berets and Larasini, the people trying to impose themselves. So you were talking about, you had the demonstration. Who was president at the time? I was president of Mecha at the time. Who was president of the university? Oh, Harry Bowes, Dr. Harry Bowes. So did you actually meet with him? Or oh, with no, we met with Harry, curriculum yeah. Curriculum committee? No, we met with both, curriculum committee. Well, the curriculum committee would never meet with us. We'd send reps. They they, no, they wouldn't even meet with us. So. Uh, so we took it to the president and told him what was going on. And that was in the fall of? I think it was 70, 
71? Spring, no, spring of 71. We started classes in 72. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Started classes spring of 72? Mm hmm. No, no, fall of 72. Stand corrected. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I, I'm proud to so announce, yeah, I was one of the few that got a minor in Chicano Studies. First one. Right. First one. I think I was the first okay. one to get a minor in Chicano Studies. So you had 100 kids in that very first class. Yep. I assume it was Chicano Studies 101. Yeah, Chicano Studies 101. And then after that, um, what other classes came online? Oh, well, we had Chicano and the Law. That's where Joe Ulibati, Judge Joe Ulibati, at that time, he just got out of law school. He, we did Chicano and the Law. That was a night class. We had uh, art, dance, history. Education? Um, what happened is teacher corps existed at that time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teacher corps people were in some of these classes, okay? And I don't remember if there was any, there could have been, I have to look at my, uh, my, um, my classes that I took when I was at the, uh, at the college. But I, I took every class they had. So if I could find it, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I could find it. Yeah. yeah. What ended up happening is a lot of those teacher corps people ended up getting, becoming teachers and setting up mechas and Chicano studies in the high schools. And that was really awesome. Uh, Dave Marcus was one of them. And uh, he helped set up a lot of the Chicano studies courses and mechas in, in, in the, on the community. Yeah. So it really paid off that we had something happening academically so we could train people, not only self-identify themselves as who they were and our history, but to go back out into the community and start teaching it in the community. And then the best part was uh, we ended up um, with money left over from that disadvantaged scholarship program, about 10,000, and we used that to set up Project Adelante, the barrio station. We went out to the projects. How did that happen? You took ASG money. Yes, student government money. To the community. How did, how, explain how that happened. You said that was one of the Chicago, Chicano barrio Stations. station projects. What happened it was that uh, we had $10,000 left over from the scholarship because one of the demands we had is that everybody that was on scholarship be taken into financial aid because they all qualified. But it was the racism of the director. He wouldn't take their applications. So we got them in. They got taken care of. So we had $10,000 left out of the 25000 okay? And we said, well, how do we apply this? through Chicano Studies, we'll set it up to uh, set up a barrio station. So we went out, talked to, talked to um, uh, the people from the Housing Authority, Jack Quinn. Mm -hmm. Jack gave us a uh, recreation center to work out of. There we got basketballs and all kinds of stuff for the kids. And Project Adelante then uh, started doing its thing, tutorial program, started uh, training. Uh, How did you get staff for something like that? Well, the first ones were Chicano students that were volunteers. The second ones were Chicano students that were on financial aid that uh, did the um, what did the work study, yeah. But the, and then people would take an independent study Chicano studies class and they would work out there and they would get credit for working at the projects. Yeah, would give them grades, would grade them. They'd go out there and work with the kids, uh, show them, you know, tutorial getting uh, applied. And we recruited quite a few kids from the uh, projects. How is it managed, though? I still don't understand how the university, well, Southern Colorado State College, is able to take $10,000 of student government money mm -hmm. to a project in town. Mm -hmm. You know, there always has to be some <coughs> paper trail of Who's oh, there was a paper trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was authorized. I managed it. I authorized the expenditures, and we gave the university the receipts. And so we bought equipment. They said, "Okay, no problem." Yeah, we ended up buying a mimeograph machine and a machine that would burn the uh, stencils for us. Yeah, it was really interesting, and we started our own. Publications. We started producing publications, newsletters. Uh, Ricardo Mora, who had just come out of the prison, produced his first book on that on that uh, mimeograph machine. I don't know if you remember Ricardo. Yeah, he 
yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I was executive director of the scholarship program, and they said, well, what do you want to do with the 10,000? Can't use it for scholarships. That's why we'll use it for Project Adelante, which caused a whole lot of people wanting that money. And like I told you before, caused a lot of interaction with certain individuals that wanted to intimidate us and take that money from us. But uh, how I do you? I think it was a great use of the money, though. Oh, hell yeah. Because Project Adelante lasted, ten as years. far as I know, about 10 years, ten years, which is a good amount yeah. of time for a community-based program. You better believe program. it. Yep. And uh, I've heard from other people it evolved into a drug um, prevention. Yeah. What ended up happening is that I wrote a proposal to city council. We got funded for $50,000 from city revenue sharing monies. Mm -hmm. And because we had already been out in the community for a year uh, with Project Adelante, we already had a history. And uh, they gave us the 50000 And with that, we started, uh, we set the project up. I left to go work for the governor's office right after that, so I, I was only there for like maybe two months after we set it up. But you graduated from SCSC, right? Yeah, I graduated from SCSC, and then I got into a master's program, and I got into uh, the uh, Urban and Regional Studies program at University of Northern Colorado, and I, I got into Newtown planning, uh, and my degree was in uh, social sciences, focus uh, uh, urban planning yeah like that's that was later on 76 and that's when I left yeah that's when I left uh, Pueblo. Pueblo to go work for the governor's office after I got my master's degree yeah oh, yeah so you talked about how Chicano studies began you talked about the <coughs> disadvantaged student scholarship pressure on the administration to fire um, mm -hmm. staff who were exhibiting yeah. discrimination yep. practices in financial aid so that then more executive, people got financial aid. Executive director. You talked about the establishment of uh, Project Adelante by students, actually, yep. of, the, of the college in the community. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember any other projects that um, university students, Mitchell students Yeah, helped. I, I think our, one of our biggest ones was setting up uh, special services. Um, that's where we brought in um, Bob Martinez, Senate, former Senator Bob Martinez and George Sorozano. And we wrote the proposal together with some of the people here at the university. And they ended up getting close to 100, 150,000. And they were around for a long time. And what did student special services do? Recruitment and financial aid uh, prep and uh, guidance and advisement in curriculum, um, showing them how to stay in college, keeping them in college. Yeah, yeah they were, I, I don't know if they still exist, but I know, uh, yeah, George Salazano and uh, Senator Bob Martinez before. Remember Juan Pineda, did Upper Bound exist? Uh, well, I remember the name Juan Pineda, but it was, uh, I knew Patrick Tate was with Outward Bound when I was here. Pineda came in after, after I left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Patrick, uh, yeah, outward bound was, or upward bound, I should say, was a big recruitment tool also. A lot of those people ended up coming to university or the college at that time. Yeah. But yeah, that was, those were the significant or activities. I mean, not talking about even taking over student government. We had the first Chicano uh, student government president. It's long, but we got one. <laughs> got our own. And then, uh, I mean, here was the training ground where I got involved with the Chicano Democratic Caucus and the Democratic Party. And uh, that to me was because of Chicano studies. It's, it tied me in to the networks, the people, especially up in Denver with the Crusade for Justice and the other people. And again, it was the Crusade and it was the uh, concilios that gave us the incentive and then we seen what happened in California to set it up. And then we came up and we set it up. And it was all student led. Yeah. It was, uh, those were great days. I mean, how many times do you take on academia? 
and uh, win. Yeah. I mean, I had just come back from Vietnam when we lost that war, and uh, you try to look for something, a focus, and Chicano Studies, that Mecha gave us that focus, it gave us a way to put that energy in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah, there was a bunch of other things we were involved with, too, the anti-war demonstrations and other things. But those, I think those were the big highlights. Setting up a nonprofit, setting up Chicano Studies, setting up special services, getting the disadvantaged scholarship program set up so we could recruit. And because uh, I was the director of the disadvantaged scholarship program also. I had written the proposal for it. So with all those things happening, it, uh, it impacted the university and it impacted the community because it was our time. It was, and that's why we're going to be holding this reception is because we want to honor those people who were involved. Because we could have lost everything. I mean, had one thing gone wrong, we could have got kicked off campus. I would have lost my GI Bill. I would have lost my financial aid. I would have lost my position on student government. Um, yeah, that would have been quite the loss. So we had to weigh it. Well, I'm and glad for your service, George. Yeah. You were there when it was all breaking loose in 70, 71, 72, so oh yeah. Oh yeah. the early 70s, so yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, even in spite of all the roadblocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I think it just made us stronger. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Other than um, I'm so proud, all the other institutions that existed before, Brown Berets, La Racenita, they're gone. Chicano Studies is still here. Even Mecha has gone. I understand that Mecha doesn't exist on campus anymore, LULAC, student LULAC organization. But Chicano Studies is here, and to me, the richness of that is that the academic part, the youth are still being trained. We got Chicano faculty that are teaching the classes. It's still a reality that exists 40 some years later, 45 years later, that I help implement. And, and to see that, and then to come back and teach classes. I taught for four years here. Ooh. And one of the classes I, uh, this is from, when I got back from uh, Washington, D.C., I spent 40 years in um, Denver and then five years in Washington, D.C., working on Hillary's campaign and for the American GI Forum. So when I came back, I, I got a hold of Fawn, and um, she wanted to acknowledge what we did. And I says, well, the best thing I could see is let me teach a class. So I taught Chicano Studies 101, I taught Chicano Studies Mental Health, but the one I loved most was a Chicano Studies research class I did. And that one was showing people how to use the census data to do the analysis, to uh, do proposal writing. And uh, I got to get the Census Bureau in, we got to show them how to use the data, how to pull it off the computer, and then how to put it into maps, highlight the areas with high concentrations of poverty, high con you know. And this is what you need for your proposals. Whenever you make a proposal, be it for drug abuse or for youth or for senior citizens and feeding, you got to have the data. It's rhetoric if you don't. And you got to show in that data the need. It's what they call a needs assessment. That to me is vital when you go out and you graduate and you go out into the community. You have to know these basic tools to be able to help our community go forward. And documentation using statistical analysis is, is the bottom line. Oh, you had your own company, didn't you? I still do. I have my own research company, World Demographic Research, and I do the research for the Hispanic Chambers nationwide on Hispanic business growth, which is interesting because, uh, first of all, I'm the only one doing it, which is really interesting. But the second is that I have uh, clients from Florida to California, Texas to uh, Chicago, New York. Uh, they all need the data. They have to show their corporate people why they should be investing in the Hispanic Chambers. And I just finished the Denver report. I'm working, going to be looking to work on the Colorado Minority Business Report that includes Asian, Native Americans, Blacks, Hispanics, and women. So that way we can show the power of all the groups together in reference to our, um, not only purchasing power, but our gross receipts generated by Hispanic, uh, by minority businesses and women businesses, mm -hmm. payroll generated. Uh, these are all data factors that are vital, and that Chicano Studies was the one that prepped me for all this. Sounds so. like a great class. Oh yeah, 
I wish I could give it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're done. This is George Otterby coming to you from Channel 59, <laughs> Telemundo. When I had my own TV program, I, I, in fact, the reason I had my own TV program uh. was because of my research. Telemundo invited me to come and make a presentation on the Hispanic growth. Mm. And then they said, can you do it in Spanish? I said, uh, yo no puedo hablar, hablar español, muy bueno. They said, we'll do it in English and we'll transcribe it. And then they gave me, I 